Okay, so uh, today we're talking about uh, phases of matter. And, you know, I like to be real with you guys. I like to tell you the truth. I don't like to hide things from you. And, you know, up until this point, everyone's told you there's three phases of matter, or sometimes four, you know, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. So I think most people... Most of you guys are aware of solid, liquid, gas, and some people are aware of plasma. Um, you know, so that's really what we, we, we teach and we preach in, in high school, middle school, like elementary school, you know, that, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. We talk about solid, liquid, gas, you know, and we're going to talk about that today. We're definitely going to talk about that today and what, how we classify these things. Um, but in reality, like scientists really aren't so concerned with states of matter as they are concerned with uh, the interactions between the particles in, in a substance. So there's two, two ways they interact. They interact with their attractions to one another and they interact with their energy, with their energies. All right, but today let, let's keep it simple. Let, let's just keep it simple. All right, and this is, this is our goal today, the topics that we're gonna cover today. All right, we're gonna talk about what, describing what occurs when matter changes phases. We're going to look at phase diagrams to identify state of matter given temperatures and different pressures. Um, so really, temperature and pressure kind of determine what phase of matter something is going to be in, uh, similar to the attractions of particles and their, and, and their uh, energies. Temperature relates to energy. Pressures relates to their attractions. Okay, the more pressure there is, uh, we put them closer and closer together, and it really, you know, so anyway, um, the next one, define and identify on a phase, the following on a phase diagram. So we're looking at phase diagrams and identifying triple point and critical temperature. Uh, we'll be looking at phase change diagrams, which is a little bit different. It's confusing. Phase change diagrams from melting to boiling points of substance. So we'll look at what happens to uh, a substance as it changes temperature. Uh, we'll also be looking at the phases of matter phase changes, and all their parts of a phase change diagram. So really that's where we're going to spend most of our time is phase of matter, phase changes, and the phase change diagrams. And then um, we're going to explain why a substance does not change temperature when it's changing phase. It's a weird concept. It's kind of hard to understand. Um, but we're going to see that as something goes from a liquid to a gas, it actually stays at the same temperature for a little while and we'll talk about why that is. All right, so let's get into it. First thing here is the phases of matter. So here are the three phases of matter that we're really gonna concern ourselves with, and we need to write this down. So pause the video here and write this diagram down. Draw this diagram exactly the way it is here. Okay, draw this, okay. Oh, and it, I see a typo here, changes in phase of matter occur due to energy being released or absorbed. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, so uh, the phase the phase of matter change because we either release energy or we absorb energy. Okay, so here we have the solid phase. If we go from solid to liquid, we call that melting. If we were to go from liquid to solid, we call that freezing. Makes sense, right? Liquid to solid, freezing. Think of ice. Ice freezing or water freezing turns to ice. If you take ice and you melt it, it turns into water, right? Uh, liquid going to a gas, if it turns from a liquid to a gas, we call that evaporation, evaporation. You can also call it vaporization, turning it into a vapor, vaporization. And if we go from a gas to a liquid, that's condensation, condensation. So we take liquid, water, we boil it on the stove, it evaporates or it vaporizes into a gas. If we take a, hot, a, a cold glass of water, then you'll see that on the outside, little uh, water will form on the outside. That is condensation. Okay, those ones I think we're all familiar with, melting, freezing, evaporation, condensation. You know, no problem. I, I don't think we have too much difficulty with those. I think most of us know those. But do write that, those terms down. You do need to know those terms, so write those terms down. Um, these other two terms are ones we're not so familiar with because we can actually go directly from a solid to a gas. 
we call that sublimation sublimation and we can actually go directly from a gas uh, to a solid we call that deposition deposition okay so if a solid goes directly from solid to a gas that's uh, that's dry ice if anyone's ever seen carbon dioxide dry ice uh, that goes directly from a solid to a gas we call that sublimation also if you leave your ice cubes in the freezer long enough they'll actually start to shrink if anyone's ever noticed that I don't know if any some people do some people don't have noticed it. you leave your ice cubes in the freezer long enough they don't there's not a little puddle there but they'd start disappearing well that's actually from sublimation right actually from sublimation because a little bit of that that solid uh, ice actually will turn into a gas and sublime okay um, and deposition deposition occurs um, it can occur in the atmosphere it can occur in the atmosphere uh, so you could have clouds and they can go directly from uh, gaseous clouds directly to hail so it happens up really high in the atmosphere when it gets really cold and low pressures okay so that's deposition okay it's also a term used it, it's a there's another term you it's used differently in different um, in different sciences but that's how we use it in chemistry okay so take a second if you're not done pause the video write those down you do need to know all those okay you do need to know all those things Next. So let's talk about the states of matter and what they look like, like what's going on. So in solids, so solids, so all this stuff in blue you should write down. So if you do need to pause the video, you can pause the video and write this stuff down. So solids, they have a definite shape and a definite volume, meaning they don't change shape, they don't change volume. Okay, they definitely don't change volume. We can change their shape sometimes if we, we use, put some energy in, right? So like, like clay is a solid. But if you take clay and you mush it around, you can change its shape. Okay, but it takes energy to change its shape. It, it takes energy. So think of it that way. Like you need energy to change its shape. Okay, also you can also think about like the particles like sand. Each individual particle of sand is a solid, but it all together kind of acts like a liquid because it doesn't have a definite shape because it all fits. But, but each individual particle of sand is a solid. It is a solid. Okay, so th that's a little bit tricky to think, but, but it is a definite shape, definite volume. Okay, now those particles inside of it, they're not still. They're not like totally not moving at all. Okay, we, they're actually vibrating in place. They actually vibrate. They move very, very slightly, very, very slightly, vibrate very, very slightly in place. Okay, that's why these little, these little things here are indicating the vibrations. So if we, have, if we heat something up, they vibrate more. If we have something colder, it vibrates less. Okay, and the reason that when you heat something up, it conducts heat is because the particles start to bump into each other and they start to heat each other up. They basically bump into each other and start making each other vibrate in place more. Okay, uh, and solids here, they have the least motion, the least kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. We'll talk about kinetic energy in the second uh, semester here, actually, oh, maybe in the second quarter at some point. Uh, kinetic energy is energy of motion and they are the most attracted to each other out of all the the phases of matter so you're gonna see that I'm going to talk about phases of matter in terms of their motion so their energy and we always think of energy their motion as temperature so how hot or cold they are and then their attraction to one another so how connected are they how much do they hold on to each other okay and attraction has to do with their uh, intermolecular forces so the forces of attraction between each particle each molecule okay if you take chemistry we'll talk more about the difference between intra intermolecular forces and intramolecular bonds um, and usually I like to talk about that I sometimes talk about it with the integrated science but but this year I'm going to kind of hold off on that and try not to confuse too much too many people here so we're going to talk about motion and their attraction. They have the, mo the, the least motion, most attraction, okay? Uh, and they, they cannot overcome the forces holding them together, so they stick together. So their energy is not enough to make them start to separate from one another, okay? So they stay all together, they stick together as a solid, right? Next, our liquids. 
liquids have an indefinite shape, so we can change their shape without any, without any energy. We don't have to like do anything to it. It just changes. It takes whatever shape, whatever the container shape of whatever container it's in. Okay, so that's it takes the shape of any container it's in, but it has a definite volume. You, you can't actually make it smaller or or bigger. It stays the same volume. It's not really compressible. Okay, it's not really compressible. It's, it stays the same volume. Uh, the particles here, they, they're kind of like have a little bit of motion. They have a little bit more motion. So I say medium motion, medium kinetic energy. And they have a medium attraction to one another. So they're kind of attracted to one another, but not super attracted to one another. Okay. The molecules, they kind of slide past one another. I, th I always think of liquids. Liquids are like a crowded a crowded street, like a crowded festival, a crowded place, somewhere that's really crowded. Like everyone's moving past one another. It's kind of hard to move past one another, but they're moving. They move past one another, they slide past one another. They, they interact for a second, but then they, they go past one another. Okay, so they slide past one another. So these ones, they can temporarily overcome forces that are holding them together, but they can't overcome them completely. Okay, so they can't overcome the forces that are holding them together completely. So that is a liquid, somewhere in between solid and a gas. So the gases are the next ones. Gases have an indefinite shape, an indefinite volume. So we can actually compress gases into a smaller volume. And they, have a de they don't have a definite shape. So we can put them in any container and they'll fit the size of the container. Size doesn't matter, right? Could be big, could be small whatever we can make them squish them together or we can spread them out these particles have a lot of energy they have a lot high kinetic energy so a lot of motion and we consider these to have no attraction to each other it's not entirely true but we say that the particles have no interactions with one another they don't they're not attracted to one another at all okay they're just running past see one another they don't even see each other basically okay. they bounce around freely with little to no interaction and I had erased this from other slides, but this term intermolecular forces, I forgot to delete it here, but it's just how they interact with one another. There's no forces between the molecules. You could think of inter as between, and molecular is the particles that make them up, so between the particles. So the forces, forces are push and pull between the molecules, okay? Intermolecular forces. So that's solid liquids gases. And again, you do need to know this right here. So again, if you didn't have this written down, make sure you write this down. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about the changes in the phases of matter. So when we change phases of matter, we have to either put energy in or we have to take energy out. So we have to either put energy in or we have to release energy. Okay, when energy is entering the system or being put in, putting in energy, we call it endothermic. Endothermic, it enters. Endothermic enters. Endothermic enters. Okay, so examples of endothermic would be like solid to liquid. We're heating it up, solid to liquid. Or liquid to gas. Those would be endothermic. Endothermic. Okay, endothermic, heat entering the system. Okay, now I don't like to think of it as the, I don't like to think of it, what, how the temperature is changing. Um, because right now we're talking about phase changes and it is pretty simple. But when we talk about chemical reactions, it starts to get a little more complicated. So um, don't think of it as you're heating it up, although that's fine. If you want to say heating it up, endothermic, sure. All right. Um, but it doesn't work that way so much for chemical reactions. So just know if you do take chemistry with me, it gets a little more complicated. Okay, uh, exothermic is the opposite. Exothermic is exiting the system. Okay, energy exits, exo, exits, exo, exits. And these are, again, prefixes, prefixes. And, and exo means on the outside. Exoskeleton is the um, skeleton on the outside. Thermic is temperature. It to, has to do with temperature, with energy. Thermal, heat. So energy 
exits the system, exits exothermic. So in this case, the temperature will go down. Okay, but think of it as the heat flow. The heat is flowing out. So if we go back to this, if we go from gas to liquid, well, gas has more energy than liquid, so we need to lose it, so it exits. If we go from liquid to solid, again, we have to, solid has less energy than liquid, so it has to exit. All right? So again, take a second, write these down. My, you don't have to write this disclaimer down here. It's just, this is what I'm talking. It's like, it's a little bit more, gets a little more confusing when we talk about chemical reactions. It's the opposite. So it's just confusing. Okay, take a minute, write that down. Okay, so let's talk about these phase change diagrams. Oof, let's look at this. Oof, this is confusing. And uh, I want you to write, draw this as well. So pause the video here and draw this. Draw this. Uh, if, actually, let me explain it first, and then and then pause the video and and it, and uh, and write it down. You might it might be easier to do that if if you understand it first. So um, on the x-axis we have heat energy. So we're, we're oh sorry, we're adding heat. We're adding heat from left to right. So the right has the most energy. You see that gas has the most energy, and solid has the least amount. Solid has the least amount. It's on the left. So we're just adding energy, okay? And then here is temperature. So the temperature is on the y-axis. So obviously, as we add heat, the temperature is going to go up, okay? You'll see during the solid phase of matter, the heat adding causes the temperature to go up at a steady state, steady pace. Until we get to right here, this would be the melting point, okay? This substance would then melt. Now, as it melts, it actually doesn't change temperature for a little bit. It's weird, I know, but it doesn't change temperature because all the energy, instead of going into moving, making the particles move faster, it starts going into breaking the bonds or breaking the forces between the particles. So it starts to turn it from a solid to a liquid. So there's energy needed to change it from a solid to a liquid. Okay. So we're changing the phase. So we use energy to change the phase. Once all of it's changed into a liquid, then it continues to rise in temperature again at a steady rate. Steady rate until it gets to its boiling point. Okay? And at its boiling point, again, it stops changing temperature. Okay, it stops changing temperature. And instead, all of that energy is going into changing the phase. Okay, and we get vaporization occurring. So I said last time, I said before, vaporization is just another word for evaporation. Both words are the same thing. They, they work interchangeably. Okay. So once it all turns into a gas, then it continues to rise again at a steady rate. Okay, so we are adding energy the entire time, but during phase changes, we get no change. We get no change in temperature because all of the energy goes to changing the, the state of matter. Okay, so kind of a crazy thing there. And all substances have this shape of the diagram. They're all the sh same shape, um, but these lines have different slopes. So some, some lines will go up faster, some will be more flat. Um, the temperatures at which they melt and they vaporize will be different. So they'll be a little bit different, but um, in general, it has the same shape. Okay, let's take a second, pause the video, draw that. Okay, hopefully you pause the video, drew it, and we'll move on to the next thing. I wanted to show you what the water, this is what water actually looks like, a phase change diagram for water. So it's a little bit different. Um, so this is the amount of energy we're adding on the bottom here. This is the temperature on the y-axis. You'll see it really doesn't take too much energy to melt ice or to, to heat ice up. And then it doesn't take much energy to melt ice, but it takes a lot of, or actually, no, it really doesn't take a lot of energy to heat water up either. Um, but that's not true actually, hold on, sorry. It actually takes a lot of energy to heat water up. If, you, if we compared this to another substance, it would look different, but, but I don't know. But it takes a lot of energy to go from water to steam. This phase change takes a lot of energy takes a lot of energy. So you see how much energy it takes there. Okay. In comparison, they, these still take a lot of energy, but comparing it to steam, water to steam, 
it's it takes it takes not as much energy to heat it up. But if we were to compare it to other substances, other substances would be like way less energy because water actually does it takes a lot of energy to heat up. So, but you have that overall same shape, the shape, the same shape as the general shape here. Just the lines are different, right? You see the different difference in the lines. So that's a phase change diagram. It shows the changes in phases as we add energy. All right. The next one is a little bit different. This one is a phase, a change in state, a phase diagram. I know it's confusing. Phase diagram versus phase change diagram. Oh, it's just one word. Oh, come on, make it easier, right? Nah, they don't make it easy. Okay, so change in state. Phase diagrams show pressure on one side, the y-axis, temperature on the other. Okay, and at different pressures and temperatures, we can tell what phase of matter a substance is in. Okay, so listen to my explanation, then pause the video and you can write all this stuff in blue and draw this beautiful picture here as well. It might take you a little while to draw all that, so... Um, and this is the last this is the last slide. So once I'm done talking here, you can just pause it and just write all this stuff down. Okay. So here again, we have the phase diagram, pressure, temperature. Okay. Um, each uh, like each um, region, each region would tell you that it's solid. So if you have this pressure, this temperature, right here, like this little dot right here, that would be solid. Okay. If you had this one right here, this would be gas. So at this pressure and this temperature, you'd have gas. All right. And then here at this pressure, this temperature, you would have a liquid. So all the green is liquid. All right. On each of the lines separating them, separating the regions, you would have the uh, phase changes. So going from solid to liquid is melting. Going from liquid to solid is freezing. Going from liquid to gas is vaporization. Going from gas to liquid is condensation. Okay, so the, the lines on the graph separate each phase of matter. All right, there is a point where all three phases meet. Where all three phases meet. Where all three phases meet. And I'm just thinking about it right now. I do have a video that shows the trivial point. Trivial point's a pretty cool, uh, it's a pretty cool point. So all phases of matter, all three solid, liquid, and gas are kind of like in limbo with one another. Like tiny changes in pressure, tiny changes in temperature will cause, will cause the uh, state of matter to change. To change. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing. I think I have a video here. I will show you in a second. But um, so that's a triple point. Let's see if I can pull it up here. So this is the triple point of cyclohexane. So uh, this is right now it's a liquid. Okay, we're just there, the guy in here is. Uh, Changing the pressure inside here, and you'll see it turns into a, a solid. Pretty cool, turning into a solid. There's still liquid there. There's liquid, there's solid, and then you'll see it bubble up, turn into a gas. You'll see all, see, like it, all three phases of matter existing at the same point. They're all like, they're all going back and forth between you have liquid, solid, gas, liquid, solid, gas, liquid, solid, solid, solid liquid, gas, solid. It doesn't know what to do. Tiny little changes in the in the pressure and temperature cause all three phases to kind of change. You see how it's doing all that? It's kind of crazy. Okay. So that's the triple point. The triple point. All three phases of matter exist. Okay. All three phases of matter exist at this pressure and this temperature. So cyclohexane, you can do it on on uh, on Earth pretty easily. You can do it with water too, but it's a uh, I don't remember the triple point for water. Okay, so that one, um, and then we also have the critical point. The critical point is the temperature at which a liquid can no longer exist. So once you get to this temperature here, then the liquid can't exist. So I don't know why they just don't draw the line straight up from here.
because then it's just a gas. So no matter how much you pressurize it, now, how, no matter how much you increase the pressure, it'll always remain a gas. It'll always remain a gas, okay? It actually, so sciences actually like have different names for, there's more than just these three, three phases of matter and they have different names for them. But this one, the supercritical fluid, or supercritical gas, or supercritical fluid, yeah, that's what I, super, I think it's what they call it, supercritical fluid, something like that. Okay, um, yeah, so that is a, a phase diagram. So let's look here, actually, uh, at the worksheet that we're going to work on right now. So again, uh, you do need to know, oh, I forgot to put that up so you could pause the video, but you can go back and pause the video on the, on the phase change, on the phase diagram um, in a second. Okay, so... For the, the worksheet you're doing here, you're identifying each part of the phase change concept map here, similar to what we drew before. And then this one, phase change diagram. Um, this one, you're identifying the phase changes that are occurring. So tell me, is it uh, evaporation, vaporization, whatever you want to use, uh, melting, sublimation, deposition. And then is it a gain in energy or loss or energy? and then endothermic or exothermic. And just so you know, gaining energy would be endo, losing energy would be exo. So it's, would, they would always be the same. Gain, endo, lose, exo. So really, just kind of a reiteration of that, okay? Uh, for this, this one you have two phase diagrams and the, um, this one is for, well, this one's for CO2 here. I think I forgot to I indicate which one it is. So this one's for CO2. This one on the left is CO2. This one on the right is H2O. I mean, by process of elimination, this one's H2O, and then asks which one for CO2. Well, it must be the other one, obviously. Okay. So you have some temperatures down here and some pressures on the side. So you just got to figure out, like, at certain pressures and temperatures, which phase would be occurring for each one of those and answer these questions here. Okay. So give it your best guess. Some are, some are kind of a little tricky to, to see, but, but do the best you can. Okay. Uh, one thing to notice here is that the line for this one, this line goes to the right. It leans to the right. So it's a positive slope, we would say in algebra. Whereas this one is a negative slope. You see it goes backwards. It like leans back. Okay, the reason for that is this one's water and this one's CO2. Water's kind of weird. It's actually a weird substance. And that actually, as you increase pressure, it's more likely to, to, to be a liquid rather than a solid, which kind of doesn't make sense because you increase pressure, you're pushing the particles closer together. You would think it would be a solid, but it actually remains a liquid. Okay, and there is a reason for that. I don't want to go into too much detail about it, but basically, as water freezes and turns solid, it actually becomes bigger, which is the opposite of what occurs for most other substances. It spreads out when it's solid, whereas most substances, when they become solid, they actually get more compact. They compact, okay? So it's a little bit confusing here, but um, the negative slope, so this has a negative slope, this has a positive slope, okay? All right, do the best you can, and that's it.